Welcome to the Legendary Upside Podcast. My name is Pat Rain. You can find all my content at legendaryupside.com. You may also be listening to this on the Sports Grid Podcast. Um, uh, and I'm joined today. By, it's more. It's it, Jacob made me wake up early, and I can't host. It's true. <laughs> I'm joined today by Davis Maddock and uh, Jacob Sanderson. Uh, early morning edition of this Dynasty Podcast, uh, guys. How's it going? Oh, great, man! It's just beautiful. It's beautiful out here. I I have a rookie draft soon, um, so I'm I, I'm getting very excited to start uh, taking action on a lot of these dynasty rankings. Uh, it's going lovely, you know. The, the other were, I remember earlier I did these seven a.m. pods every week with Davis during the season, and it was dark outside. And then we went spring ahead, so it's no longer dark at like four p.m. But it also the sun also just came out right now, so that's that's the sign of how lovely we're progressing right now as a world. And I had my first dynasty rookie draft this weekend. Um, I, I was the total rube that was like trading for picks in the rookie draft just so I could do fun stuff. Oh, that's uh, nice. It was great. Yeah, that, yeah. You say rube, but I mean we're doing this for fun, and that's about as fun as it can get. Yeah, Could you it is, it it is the best. Can I can I tell you guys um, how I've been the rube over the last week? I, I woke up last week after Keenan Allen got traded to the Chicago Bears, and I said, you know what? What's the worst that could happen if I just sent a mid third for Quentin Johnston in every single league that I'm in? What what is honestly? I got rid of my last two happen? Quentin Johnstons right after that trade, and so I and I was I was the exact opposite person as you. I was the one fetching the the random stuff for Quentin Johnston. Hmm. It's it's kind of like sides, Davis's side of, side of it, of it where you're like, point. it's a third, you know, <laughs> like it's oh, probably well, worthless anyway. A third is a third is fine. I, I traded him once for the two twelve and a twenty five third. Okay. Um, and then I uh, and, and then I traded him for Cortland Sutton in a start eleven. Yeah, I, I would take Sutton. I mean, those are those are definitely winning transactions, but it's just like for for Quinton Johnston specifically, it's like what do you win when you win? And like, what if he does just get 117 targets from Justin Herbert this year? Like it, I mean, it, that's probably his median projection right now is probably something like 120. I, I would like targets. to bet the under on 117 targets. If that's his median projection. <laughs> I, I mean, if you just, if you just, what, what is, is Josh Palmer getting 140 targets this year? He got benched for that? Alex Erickson at one point last year. I don't think he got benched he just got out targeted he was out there he was out there he, he was uh he was out there he, just, no, he, he, was not he came off the, the field and then brandon staley went out and it was like it was not injury related well it, it is interesting because i was like okay once they traded allen i'm like they're sitting tight at five and they're drafting the league neighbors that just makes like a lot of sense but then oh buddy they are not drafting they're league. not you think you think they're, dra- they're trading down into probably. the league you think Harbaugh's coming into the league and taking a wide receiver from an SEC school? The the very thought chills him to the bone. He would never. This feels a little Urban Meyer. Me, I, I'm sorry, it does. It feels this yeah, is yeah. this is mismanagement. What's going on? You don't come in and trade away all of the dude's weapons. Cut like keep Williams. Then like you gotta have Herbert has to have someone he's comfortable throwing to. Like this makes no sense. Well, that's a, I, that's I a hope good that the place plan to is, start. Yeah. I hope that the plan is draft a wide receiver at five or maybe trade back and it's draft. They're going to trade like, back, I think. Like, I, I hope that that's the plan. I think a trade back could make sense. Like, it's a deep wide receiver class. They could get two wide receivers out of this class, maybe if you trade back. I mean, I can't really knock the decision to trade Keenan Allen. Like, he's a 32 year old team player. This team is going absolutely nowhere. They got a fourth round pick for him. Like, I think that's like probably good. Um, but the corresponding moves is, is going to be what defines. What yeah, I, I so good. I disagree with that, Jacob, because this is like this. It's like it's like NBA tanking logic is is what just happened there. And what you will often find on these tanking teams is that it it actually helps a lot to just have like maybe two adults in the room. So a great example right now in the NBA is the difference between the Spurs and the and the Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers with Malcolm Brogdon out, like. They can't do anything. Their young players are like regressing, like learning terrible habits. Whereas the Spurs, they have uh, Trey Jones playing point guard, and it like actually allows Victor Wembanyama to like do things. And that's just well, you could even say the difference is just the Spurs versus the early season Spurs when they were doing the point Sohan. But uh, this is not an NBA podcast. But but the the point is, is that Herbert 
in his first year with Greg Roman and with Harbaugh mm-hmm. as his coach is going to be handing the ball off to Gus Edwards and Blake Corum and I, I guess throwing the ball to Will Disley and Josh Palmer. I mean, it, it, they are set up to be get I, like anytime the Chargers play against a good team, they are going to be like getting boat raced by the Rams and shit. Like they're, it's going to be really bad. The other thing about Herbert, well, Herbert's I, very, very good, but he's not inherently all that aggressive of a passer. So I yeah. do think he's someone that benefits a lot from really good weapons. You know, like if if he's if he were with the neighbors, I think that would unlock something in his game. Like he's he's capable of fully supporting neighbors and having an amazing connection. Like I don't think he's not a knock on Herbert. He's not going to like limit a great wide receiver. In fact, he's going to enhance that great wide receiver. But if he doesn't have any weapons at all, he's not Mahomes. Like it's it's not going to. Like you, you need to surround him with talent. I don't understand. I don't understand. Especially, I, I would understand more if they were just going to sit there and take neighbors. But they're now in a position where, like, they kind of hold the keys to the kingdom here. As long as this McCarthy steam is real, I, I would be extremely tempted to trade down if I were them. I actually think it's probably the sharpest move. You know, assuming that a trade package exists, like I think. But now you're maybe going down to eleven. And you miss Odunze, most likely. So what do you draft? Thomas? They probably don't, to to Davis's point. They're, that's probably not their move. So I don't know. It's just like they probably draft a defender because you can go down and get an edge at 11. Mm-hmm. It's like a per- Harbaugh's probably loving that. I guess then what do you take? A second round guy? Like are we... Like, you take you take two guys. You take like one second round guy. And you take a third or a fourth round guy. You take two guys which, and you hope you hit big on one. We could we could end up being pretty happy about that. Maybe maybe we're being too hard on. Uh, I, on I've got. Just, I just want to see the finished product. That's all. Like the one thing I'll give yeah. Harbaugh and my my like urge to clown Harbaugh is high because I find him annoying and he Me wears too. khakis and he like runs the ball too much. But like he has had success, not just in college but at the NFL level, right? So it is. It's a little bit hard for me to do the Urban Meyer thing when we have had we've seen him have immense success. At Stanford, we saw him have immense success at San Francisco. We saw him have immense success at Michigan. Right. Like, I, I at least want to give him the benefit of the doubt, where it's not halfway through an off season and I'm I'm ready to take off. Like, I, I know it's I un- it's unfair. The of the doubt. I'm also going to keep doing it. The um, I I am too. I I am too. <laughs> I I've got absolutely I've got absolutely no interest in capitulating until until forced. <laughs> I, I think that I think that the NFL has changed so much since the last time. That's Harbaugh that's a part of it for me. Coached. Yeah coached in it it's a different like league. yeah he, he was successful with those 49ers teams but it, it's a it's a much different game being played the elite defenses on those teams as well so and I mean, really good all, skill position players on offense too right and like greg roman coaching colin kaepernick is a little bit different than him coaching justin herbert like justin herbert's yeah. a legit drop back passer I mean, and like I, we've seen Roman, like Roman, everyone knows what Roman's going to do. Like the, the yeah, it's just not run stupid it's not inspired. sprint right option and dumb slot outs and run the ball way too much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, M- Michael Crabtree and Vernon Davis are better than are much better than any skill position well, player some, on, on some. Chargers. Some would well, say are now. Michael Crabtree was an average <laughs> wide receiver. Some would say something like Richard Sherman, perhaps. <laughs> Randy Randy Moss was on was on one of those teams. Uh, I mean, granted, it was it was a later. I think that was towards the end there. Yeah, that was and, the Anquan, very last day. Anquan Bolden, An- Anquan Bolden, Frank Gore. I mean, these were the, 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 he had access to a lot of very good skill position players. That are yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just resetting. Let's just see who they draft. Let's just yeah. see who they draft. It could More be that he's just question. like Allen's old. You know, he was he was only on his last year anyway. Maybe it's like let's just reset. We got a year. They're not gonna fire us after this year. Let's like get things where we want them. So I don't know. Maybe we just have to be. The pushback I'd have to Davis too is like I agree with everything you're saying about getting adults in the room. If you're the Patriots, like I have deep concerns about the Patriots. They did that. Like the fact that they like Jacoby. Like the fact that they just opted out of fixing wide receiver. They opted out of fixing left tackle. And if to they be fair to the Patriots, Patriots, Calvin Ridley opted out of him fixing wide receiver. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they could have offered the Titans contract. I, I don't think that's, that they offered that that's much. True. Like, I mean, they could have just been they, yeah. the, Cal, the Patriots literally like they have a hundred million dollars in cash. It's like they could have just been like Calvin Ridley. They could have given years, fully guaranteed could, eighty mil. 
And he'd been like, I I actually love Dunkin' Donuts. Thanks very much. I've always wanted to play here. Uh, Like, I I think that with the Patriots, you know, they they signed what? They re-signed Kendrick Bourne off an ACL tear and KJ Osborne. And then they don't even re-sign Trent Brown and they haven't made any other left tackle moves. So you look at what they do. Like, if they do draft Daniels or May, and at this point, I really hope that they don't. Um, I think they're going to. Like, that quarterback is getting, isn't a very bright young E. Justin Fields, the situation year one, which I think is irresponsible. I think with the Chargers, at least, like you don't have to find out if Justin Herbert's good. You you know Justin Herbert's good. I, I don't I, I don't think it's impossible that you can break him midway through, but I, I do think if you're gonna subject someone to one year of horribleness, it's a little safer to do that with Herbert than like what the Patriots are about to do to a rookie or what the Panthers did last year. Yes. So I moved Herbert down to 23rd. I've got him behind oh, Kyler. God. I I've got move him behind, down to 23rd. I, I've got him behind Malik Neighbors and Garrett Wilson. So that's probably uh that that's probably gonna ruffle some feathers. But Kyler's just gonna score more fantasy points than Herbert is over the next two years be, because of the nature of the offenses they're in, I think. Well, you guys good know me. That. I don't I don't mind an aggressive Kyler rank uh, at any point. But uh, Herbert the same age is, is, I mean, it's a tough one to push back on. I have him at 15 and Kyler down at 28. Wow, but me. I'm still holding strong with Herbert at eight here. Um, taking Her- a long view on that situation. Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And he's still very young. Really- you get him on your dynasty team for 10 to 15 years. Yeah. And you never have to worry about him. He's going to be I'm there worried forever. about him right now. Jake. I'm, I'm worried. I, I'm not worried about him being a good quarterback in the NFL for a long time. What I'm worried about hyper specific next, like let's say next three years is he's just not going to be in an offense that is all that interested in putting points on the board. We've seen what happens, for example, with Mahomes, who like inarguably he is the best, but his fantasy point production has been hurt pretty significantly by just playing with a bunch of jabronis and and trying to win games that way. And that is the backup plan for the Chiefs is to play that way. I think they're clearly broadcasting this offseason. They're not interested in playing that way anymore. But that's actually the mode that Harbaugh would prefer to be in. Harbaugh would prefer to literally be dead last in pass rate over expectation in the NFL. That's like how he wants to play. Yeah. If, what if I so I don't think I want to move Herbert down a ton, but Jacob, if I'm if I've got Herbert and I can extract some of that value, we talk about how quarterbacks, you know, they're kind of yeah. almost stores of value at times, but you know, sometimes you want to get some of that value out to help you win. Like if you can go down from Herbert to Dak and get that excess value, that's pretty enticing, right? I mean, it depends what the excess value yeah. is, but like Dak's gonna outscore Herbert pretty easily this year i think yes yeah um i mean i I would hesitate to be like particularly certain about that but um like i don't know how much the choice charge are gonna okay i mean i (laughs) i think i think i would take jack straight up over herbert but to me it's more like a 55 45 this year i don't i don't feel quite as certain about it um i would certainly rather are pretty different now but yeah i think that's all I mean, this is okay. Well, this is maybe the point then is like, you know, is Herbert a sell if everybody's thinking like you guys are, are thinking? Like, I, I agree. Like, if you can get the prices of Herbert of, of yesteryear and extract that and then move into a DAC or move into, you know, one of these other quarterbacks that goes more in the second round, early third round of drafts, um, I'm, I'm here for that. But it would still need to be a significant cost. Like, we're still talking about what is it a five year age difference, four year age difference between DAC and Herbert? It's like four and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Four and a half. So like I'm I'm needing at least like a mid first to to even to really consider that deal. I think. I think you by my rank you'd get an early second. Yeah, no. I'm I'm hard declining on an early two for sure, and I would make it in the other way. I would I would happily add. What about a late one? Would you take a late one? On uh, well, like if it's a late one and this class is in, it's 108. Then sure, and if it's 109, then no. <laughs> The 109 might actually have some value, and you just hope someone makes a mistake. It could. Well, what, you what, have. What, you actually have. You, the guy that you have ranked at 108 is not who I have ranked at. 108. Okay. Well, so then I've, I've made the mistake. Yeah. So there you go. The right, you have Thomas who, who at eight. Who do you have right? at 108? Who's not McCarthy? Don't you have Thomas at eight? It's same thing. 
Um, well, that's the thing. I don't think that that's the same thing. I, I feel great about McCarthy 108, and then I feel like it's a drop. I'm going to move McCarthy up, actually, because uh, the Crack Rock Skinny came out, and he's going to the Vikings. But isn't it isn't it isn't it the four <laughs> isn't it the four quarterbacks and the four wide receivers plus Bowers? So one hundred nine well, is yeah, fine. It's one ten. It's one ten. Well, yeah, one hundred nine is fine. I think of it as more as the three wide receivers, and then and then I like Thomas more than the rest. But I, I like Thomas is going to be like the fifteenth pick. He's yeah, he's a fifteenth pick. He's a yeah. I that's mean, my concern. Is he's going to be the fifteenth pick? Do you want Brian you Thomas mean? with Michael Pittman and Josh Downs and Anthony Richardson? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh literally the 15th you're saying, pick. You're yeah. saying you're hyper, hyper. <laughs> no, I'm saying he's going to be the 15th pick. Like, I, I'm promising you Chris Ballard is drafting this guy. I mean, I think that's fine. What I, He's a lot better than Downs. He might be better than Pittman. I mean, Pittman is sort of. Are we sure he's Pitt- better than Downs? Downs is pretty good. Downs is pretty Downs, good. Yeah. Brian Thomas is good. Are we, like, in no, like my no, Bill no, Simmons no, voice, like, are we sure Brian Thomas is good? Like, he, he did nothing for two years. Everything's one year of production. It's a lot of deep production. Like, to me, this is not a, a high volume target earner. This is like a 20% target share guy, most likely. And can he be super efficient winning deep down the field? And I and I think the answer to that is probably yes. But if the answer to that is no, there's nothing else. Like I, I don't think it's a safe profile at all. I think it's a very boom bust profile, which is fine. Like I don't I, I haven't ranked one yeah. nine. But I but I think like the other three are are substantially safer profiles, especially especially the top two. Well, the top two are about as safe as we ever get. Yeah, they're they're yeah. unassailable. I, I would I say Harrison Jr. Like is probably the safest. Already. Yeah, Harrison Jr. is like the safest profile maybe ever. Mm, Chase yeah. Chase was a pretty freaking good. Prospect. Chase was safe, but he didn't play his final season. He played one one single season. Right so there. I think Chase was a little. Although him then he went to the Bengals, so then that made him pretty safe. Playing with this former quarterback, but um, yeah. To be pre-draft, I think Harrison's like a little safer, even if maybe you want to say Chase was the better prospect. There were there were also like some weirdos in the film community that like didn't like Jamar Chase. Have you heard a single person that doesn't like That's Jamar true. Harrison? I haven't. I, I, I do. Heard I do remember that. Um, I I guess the the biggest argument that I would make on uh on this class is that I love the two Texas guys. I I am I'm twenty spots ahead of um. The, the consensus right now. How they do in the combine? Is, is sell really sell me on sell me on AD Mitchell because like that guy doesn't do anything. <laughs> I'll, tell, I mean, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you the same shit. I'll tell you the same shit that I told Pat. Is it the which touchdowns? Is, that, is it that you like that he touchdowns. scores touchdowns? It's it's the, no. It's that the guy played five college football playoff <laughs> games and scored five touchdowns, and he matched that with insane combine shit. So if if I'm gonna hear uh, the the targets per route run argument or whatever, I mean one. I actually am curious your guys' thoughts on this. Do you guys find at these the crazy good schools, the Georgia, Alabama, Texas, like like top 10 schools, that targets per route run, I mean, obviously an insanely high targets per route run is very good, but when you are at that level, isn't isn't the barrier for a target per route run a little bit less because you are mostly playing with all very good players and and a lot of the times the games like that you're playing in literally do not matter like the the score line would indicate that like what's happening on the field is basically of no consequence i use yards per route run more than i so i'm not actually sure what his targets per route run is but it's not um, that good yeah i assume it's not that good because his yards per route run is very bad and big play guy his targets per route run has got to be even worse right so my my concern is, like I almost view it as the opposite. Like some of these guys are on great teams, and their yards per route run is actually the signal that right that great that team they're the engine be, that, that they're, they're the engine the, that they're the engine, and they may be coming off the field at certain yeah. times because the team's so loaded, they are winning by so much. We saw this with T Higgins; his yards per route run was awesome at Clemson. But his yeah. dominator rating and stuff was was not very good. He looked like a real boom bust guy because you're like, what's what's real? But the real was the yards per out run. I, I think Lad McConkey, one of the things you can point to this year is like his yards per out run is awesome. And so, you know, he's there's injury concerns there too. Um, but like he's on this great team. He didn't run all the routes. What is that? You know, is that because the team's so great? Eddie Mitchell, yards per out run sucks. Like it's like straight up bad. It's like at yeah, a tight end, care. I'd be like, "This isn't I, I good." Do, I do not care. I really, so, I really don't. So it's weird because it's the dominator rating actually that's 
good, although it's not great because they only did it one year. But this past but year, the touchdowns are carrying that. And that's true. The touchdowns are carrying that. Well, you know I think what you get a lot of fantasy is... points for? Fucking touchdowns. Right. So his targets per out run is yeah. 174. I just I just caught that right now. That's like not good. Like that would be not good in the NFL, right? And like I, I get that he played with good teammates, but you know, when you when anyone comes from a college program and they're like, wow, he played with two other NFL players, it's like that's really an outlier. That's like what an incredible program. He's definitely gonna be playing with two NFL players in the NFL. So like if you can't <laughs> get better than a point one seven four targets for out run against two NFL players, I find that concerning about his ceiling i i um, also um i am this is and maybe you guys will disagree with me on this i i am projecting that he goes to one of the five best quarterbacks in the nfl i i think he is ex- incredibly likely to be a Bengal, a chief a bill um like one of like a, a very good team i i think is going to be selecting him and, and but I, i've done this for years with the prospects i like the most the draft sure, is generally sure. disappointing <laughs> You know, yeah, the draft is almost always disappointing. No, dude, but do you remember? Do you remember when Sky Moore got taken by the Chiefs? How euphoric it was for like three yeah. months until we realized. I, I remember those months. Oh, <laughs> the four of those months yeah. were great. <laughs> so good. So, uh, I hope that Ad Mitchell goes to a really good team and and boost boost him up the board. That would make me really happy. Um, I find him a little scarier way, than you do. Two like, targets for a run. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying Xavier Worthy, by the way, 0.242 targets per run. So like full full 7% or 7 percentage points higher than AD Mitchell, which is so 24%. Really substantial. What was what On was uh, the exact same amount of routes? What was AD Mitchell? 17. 17. Jeez. That's low. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean it's but AD Mitchell's like he's athletic. His whole thing is JT Sanders also higher, by the way. He was at 18. Wow. Let me look up Sanders yards per hour run because that's honestly that AD Mitchell's so low that it's like if he was yeah, JT Sanders end, is 1.86 nervous. uh yards per route run. Uh-huh. Uh final season and Adney Mitchell's 1.72 final season. Man. I mean when we, when we talk about like Marvin Harrison and stuff, he was at yards per route run of 3.18 is a true sophomore and 3.44 is a true junior like that that is what you want um if you, you know you you're hovering around like in the twos that's fine but you'd love to have someone be like peaking up in the threes um well and Malik add, neighbors was at 3.64 this this last season for example and one thing i would point out too is and you know you could argue that the quarterback play was better but i, I don't think viewers is like that horrible um it can happen with multiple weapons. Like you look at Washington this year. Roma Dunze, 2.93 yards per run. Jalen McMillan, 2.30. Jalen Polk, 2.29. You go back to their 2022 season, you have uh, yards per run of uh, 2.51 for Dunze, 2.32 for McMillan, 1.84 for Polk. So like just because you have three NFL players, like you can have seasons where they're all cumulatively up over two yards per route run. Um, in a way that wasn't happening at Texas this year, and you can put some of that on yours, but like I don't, I, I don't think he's going to be a good NFL quarterback. I, I don't think he's like a, I don't know, a otherworldly bad college quarterback. Um, I, I'm not like going to say that Ad Mitchell has no chance. Like the athleticism is is legitimately impressive, and he has the pedigree. But it's, you know, there's just so many wide receivers in this class that um, will have the option to take. That I, I think he'll be one that is is. You have to fade somebody. Uh, that would be the one that I would fade. Yeah, I'm so, fading Keon, I'm fading Keon Coleman. <laughs> if, if if Mitchell goes, you know, late first round, he goes to the Chiefs, goes to the Bills, whatever. I mean, let's say he goes to the Bills because that's actually like, damn, dude. Like, It's like a really good marriage of quarterback and wide receiver skill. It it's is. really good. Yeah. So, Davis, where are you taking him if he goes to the Bills? Like, are you taking? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to take him ahead of Thomas, so he's one ten. Okay, okay, so he's locked in at at one ten. And would you take him at one ten, Jacob? No, no. Oh, I think you almost have to. At one yeah, I'm not. I'm not taking him over. Four, worthy. Like, I saw them play together, and one oh, of them was so I mean, much better I mean, than the other one. So I, I think, <laughs> I think it's 165 pounds, and the others on the Bills. 
No, no, I'm fine. Well, with where, where's Worthy where in this scenario? Like, is he is he like in Siberia? Like, I'm assuming he's also getting he's drafted on the in the late first or the early. Oh second. God! Oh, oh then oh. I'm in on that. I'm no, in on that. no, no, Jacob, no, no. Wait, you want Young is going to see another? Is going to see another little man? He's like me, you, lollipop guild. I'm throwing you 150 times. Okay, we right, will right, see each other, Jacob. I've got, I've got the, I've got the, the. Absolute... No, they're going to be throwing underneath the defender's legs. He's gonna be throwing, like, <laughs> below the dude's like <laughs> legs, the worthy. I've got the brain-breaking <laughs> landing spot for Xavier Worthy. The Miami that's Football here. Dolphins take him at twenty-one, and he he fits oh, into sucks. the 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 A chain. A chain worthy Tyreek Waddle. It's like everyone on the whole team runs a four three. What do you do with Xavier Worthy at 165 pounds? He's he's really just wide receiver A chain, really. Like if you well, that's that's you, a bummer. I mean, I, I take him probably in like the mid second at that point. Like people aren't gonna be into that, I don't think. They should be. They should be. Where should, where is the where's there's, the there's only one ball for worthy? There's so many, there's so many short kings in that scenario. Where do you want Xavier Worthy to go if you're a worthy bull? Which I am. I like worthy too. Where do you want him to? Oh, um, Chiefs, uh, Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Do we do we trust the McCarthy Schottenheimer brain trust to use 165 pound wide receiver correctly? I guess they did kind of free up Turpin a little bit at the end of last year, and Xavier Worthy's just like Giga Cavante Turpin. I hope he's a little better than Giga Cavante Turpin. But uh... the the easy answer is the Chiefs. We gonna we know we're gonna get yeah. some design stuff, which is great, yeah, and then you. Fine. You were eventually hoping he he's like a true deep threat. You're you're hoping he it's a does crowded, the... though, the Chiefs all of a sudden. Is it? Marquis Brown's on a one year deal and Kelsey's like about to goes retire to Chiefs, and do a podcast like option, with his option number four this year, probably in the passing game. So what starts They're... is four, ends is two, probably. Yeah. Ends is two. And then you're ends is I two? mean who's he jumping? Kelsey? Brown. Hollywood. Who do you and think? One? Rice? Well, Kelsey, they're oh, going to have to should, save for should. the playoffs. Let's uh, let's gonna... actually do this. Let's do let's do the Rashi Rice discussion. Um, okay, okay. It it it's going to pain me. It's it's really going to pain me to do this because I was I loved him uh, when we were doing these last year. I was big on him. Um, I took him a lot in Best Ball Mania. But Rashi Rice is, I think, a great example of a guy who fills a void that was super needed. The, the Chiefs just needed someone who was baseline competent which Rice really was, but he played a lot really close to the line of scrimmage. He was not super explosive down the field. A lot of it was yak-based. And I think clearly what we've learned is that the Chiefs do not – they that's not their preferred mode of playing. I think the, the Hollywood Brown signing shows that. I think it'll be signaled even more if they end up taking Mitchell or Worthy. I, I think Rice – I mean, I think he's good, but I definitely think you could argue his rookie season was a bit of – compiling with a lot of really shitty players playing next to him um, a, as opposed to he's this, he's the 12th best wide receiver in, in dynasty or whatever. Um, that's, that's where I'm at on, on him. Let's see, where did I, I, I actually ended up ranking him above consensus because I was lower on the quarterbacks around him. But for example, I've got him behind <laughs> Devonta Smith, a Dunze and, and DK Metcalf. Okay. My, my favorite bit on this, recurring podcast is davis will give a take and then he'll be like and my ranking completely disagrees with the take. <laughs> it, it disagrees with it it disagrees with it position uh, overall but not positionally positionally i, I it's true but oh, what, I, what I just wide like, do you have him i've got him i don't know how to i don't know how to read our sheet i've I, right, i've got him right after metcalf sheet. devonta and adunze Okay. What what sheet should I be looking at? The formatted rankings, the leg up rankings. I, I, I use, I use formatted sheet. rankings. Uh, I also okay. have my own uh, pat sheet that I that I look at. Okay. Uh, I I'm I guess well this is, I was about to do the Davis thing. I was about to make the bull case for Rice, but then I just looked at the sheet and I realized I'm like pretty decisively the lowest on him. So I guess I guess I shouldn't do that. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with everything that Davis said. I I still think it's like worthwhile that he had what was it like a 2.39 yards per run or something crazy maybe not that high yeah. but it was it was it, well it, it, it got lower in the playoffs it dropped to 2.21 um it was higher in he, remember the he, he did get hurt in the playoffs though he was playing right he got hurt in the playoffs so yeah. i think using the playoff one is is pretty like fair of us you know if, if we're trying to factor in the low range of outcomes or the whole range of outcomes as people are bullish let's say <laughs> even though maybe we all aren't but 
we're bullish on rice playoff yards per route run of 2.21 is pretty good and it includes games where he was hurt i uh stephanie miller just had an article up on rice on legendary upside um that's totally free to check out by the way uh and that's the the yards per route run reference there but he had 2.39 in the regular season and she notes in there like it's how much his yard or his routes increased so i think the thing with rice is that you're looking at him running way more routes in a full season than he did last year because he didn't really play a full-time role until like the last three weeks of the regular season. And then he was really good in that role. They've added Marquise Brown, but like he's going to play a specific out, uh, role on the outside. There's plenty of room in the offense for a rookie wide receiver to come up. And then you got Brown leaving at the end of the year, most likely. You've got Kelsey potentially retiring. So I'm not particularly worried about a, a wide receiver joining there. In fact, I would like for the Chiefs to get back to what they were doing a couple years ago, where they were more uh, you know, effective in the passing game. The other thing I do like about Rice is that if you look at his first read targets, they never got like that great. And yet his targets per outrun was very high. And so it's sort of like, you can say he was just an outlet or like a symptom of the of a bad offense. And that's probably true to a degree. Like Mahomes was running around, not finding anything, and then finding rice underneath. So he's sort of like a check down type of option. That's that could potentially those targets could go away if they if they have more effect. You know what your you know what your bull case would be target. on on rice would be that as Kelsey retires or fades yeah. out to a guy who That's like literally can't play that much is that basically He's over the dude. next four years Rashi Rice just becomes Travis Kelsey. Yeah, that's honestly what what you're looking at. He's got to connect because the other way to read this is he's got a connection with Mahomes. Mahomes knows where to find him when the when the primary design of the play isn't there. That's pretty valuable. And the other thing is, he's a first year he, in his rookie season. The offense wasn't designed to go through him, but that might change. That's actually a, a potential point of upside. That's a good point. Yeah. Where maybe he gets more first read targets. I mean, that's what we see with, with great wide receivers is that, you know, in year two, year three, the first read targets tick up as they become the focal point of the offense. My, my thought would be is that that's actually pretty unlikely given the context of Kelsey still on the team. They sign Hollywood and they've got this pick at 32. That's like really likely to be a wide receiver. That's do you think it's still probably good. to be a wide receiver post Hollywood signing? Or do you think that maybe that gets pushed back? Uh, honestly, because it's a one year deal it, it might even make it more likely to me actually, because it was a one, because it was a one year deal and they know like any reasonable person, which I think the front office in Kansas City is, looks at the team and says it's not sustainable to have Pat in his prime throwing to just all these cast offs. It just it's it. I mean, right. it it almost killed them. Like they had such a low yeah. margin of error as a team. They they fucking got one first down against the Raiders in the second half of of the Christmas Day game. Like it's not a sustainable way to build. Yeah. The other thing I'll say for Rice too is like just you know. I think all this context is is really valuable. Um, but I remember we sort of had some similar conversations, obviously in the context of a way worse offense about Amon Ross St. Brown coming off his rookie year. That's, I was going to bring him up. That's it, such it, a good it reminds me of it. Yeah. Um, you know, and one of the one of the cases I made was like, now the nice thing with Amon Ross is that the community was very much doubting him. And so the, the point of entry on price was like really, really nice on him. Um, and he was even going much lower in ADP than, uh, than Rasheed Rice is now. But pretty much, like, really raw cutoffs. Rookie wide receiver runs at least 200 routes as above an 80 PFF receiving grade, as above a two yards per route run. And Rice is clearing those by a lot, not by a little. He's at 86 right. PFF grade. You said, uh, you know, I always use regular season yards per route run for that, so the 2.39, but you can use the 2.21, includes the playoffs. Use 2.39, be my guess. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's clearing those by a million. And like every single wide receiver on that list is, is like exceptionally good. And it ranges from like truly elite. Like we're talking like the Tyree kills and we're talking like the Antonio Browns and all that stuff to like basically the worst wide receiver on the list is like Terry McLaurin. So you're, you're basically in a, it would be really at this point, like I think you're buying a pretty high floor asset right. where we're almost irrespective of prospect profile. If you're, 
putting up that type of rookie season, you're probably at least like a long-term wide receiver two uh, in fantasy. And you're, you're then like buying Christian the Kirk. upside of what like, if he's like, way What's better. the worst Christian Kirk has been out, out, you know, I guess there was a real bad spot there in Arizona for a year, but that's kind of what I was thinking. But that David, was a little you, bit like, I don't know, Cliff was using him as like a deep threat and he was being weird. Yeah. You, you have Rice. I don't know. I, we don't know exactly what wide receiver rank you have, but it's around wide receiver 20. Is that fair? I think that, and that seems, that seems fair, but like his, can you, so can like, you guarantee me that you never had Michael Hardman above that? Yes, I can. I can guarantee it. I can. <laughs> now I, I did obviously take Hardman in multiple first rounds, but if we remember the McCall Hardman <laughs> draft class, it was like, it was a bad rookie draft class, like one of the worst. Um, in terms of how it was viewed, it sounds like how it was perceived, but it was actually really good because it ended up being it ended up being really yeah. good. Yeah, but that yeah. was that was how it was perceived. Yes, yeah. I I stone cold guarantee you. I mean, actually, if you wanted to have a charitable interpretation, you would say Rashi Rice is kind of the final evolution of what they wanted Hardman and Sky Moore to be, which is just like a, an athletic guy who can gain yards after the catch. He can do the end around, and the guy got two rush attempts in the Super Bowl. It it kind of fits what. Reed had always wanted out of that position, but every guy they drafted sucked at it. Like, like Juju, couldn't, like couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. O almost, almost like a melding of what they wanted Hardman to do and what Juju did do. Actually, um, I mean, yeah. imagine if imagine if young Juju Smith Schuster was on the Chiefs. Would have been a, you would have loved having that guy on your team. So maybe, but maybe that's I what we might have wrong. here. We might have. I mean, so Pat, you have them really high. Like, who are the guys you have them over at the wide receiver position? That Ayuk, like, I certainly, I have them over Dunze. I mean, wow, I've got okay. a guy who just had over two yards per hour, and he's on the Chiefs. I mean, I, I like Odunze, yeah, but like that's compelling. I don't think I'm moving off of that for Odunze. Uh, hmm. I've got I've got him over Nico. That one might Nico just had an incredible season, so that maybe yeah, that's a tough that's a tough sell for me. I, think. I, I imagine that's I, I, tough. Yeah. Because he has all the same environmental, like goodness that Rice has, right? With Stroud, um, right? He did it as a as a third year guy. He what? Yeah, yeah, it was a later breakout. Also, not a great prospect. And I'm do you have like Dell over. Do you have Dell over, over Dell and Dell over Rice? Dell. But it's one. That's you have one him over Dell as well. Just okay, one spot higher so. than Dell. Yeah, I I've got him higher than Tank Dell as well. Out of the same concerns that everyone has about tank Dell, which is it's unclear how long a guy can survive. I mean, the worthy concerns, right? How long can a guy survive at 165 pounds in the NFL? Yeah. Dell. I mean, if you want to have Dell over him, I have no issue with that. Um, I, I don't have an issue with it either. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I've got him. I'm not going to move him up over Dell. I've Dell pretty high. I, I'm going to move him up over the, uh, over like the contingent of like, middle-aged wide receivers yeah. that are probably wide receiver 15 like the, you know one have, reason like to right do now that i have them behind like more Pittman, metcalf and higgins and that's that's probably being being lame you know so why i, I think for that you should do that and, and stephanie mentions this in her piece is that he's going ahead of like all those guys maybe not more but he's going ahead of like that middle class middle-aged group of wide receivers in best ball so we as dynasty managers are like applying this discount that doesn't even exist. Like his immediate production is expected to be better than DK Metcalf. Yeah, he's gonna fall a lot though. His best ball mania ADP is gonna be like wide receiver twenty eight yeah. after after they take a wide receiver in the first round. And Holly because can... Hollywood right now, I was just drafting this morning. His ADP has moved up to wide receiver forty three. Hollywood's gonna move up to like wide receiver thirty five. Yeah. There's gonna yeah. be a lot of tweets about Hollywood Brown's gonna outscore Rashid Rice this year on on Twitter. Yeah, you'll get um, that for sure. Yeah, I yeah. think if Hollywood stays healthy for 17 games, he probably does outscore Rashid Rice. Honestly, I really do. Because it's it's always interesting. Like I'm I I'm no, kind of coming here, I guess, as the lower ranked on Rice, but I don't consider myself to be that way in the larger ecosystem. Like especially in the dynasty ecosystem, I guess the best ball world is far more bullish. But you see on dynasty, there's a lot of like. Like there was, a, I saw an argument about like Jordan Addison or Rasheed Rice in Dynasty, and like more people I saw were on the Addison side of that, and I, not I'm not at all. Me. Yeah, but like that's the not, thing is that's with Dynasty, like, I think, because... no, and I agree with you guys. I agree with you yeah. guys. Um, but I, I think with Dynasty, like, you'll have a lot more people that are holding onto their priors. Like I've seen a lot of people be very pro, like JSN over Rasheed Rice. Oh um, God, can you imagine? Imagine being mm -hmm. that guy. 
I mean, that's, that's just kind of how Dungeon doing Slayers are. Hope. So it's a different market. Yes, like this is, yeah. If you can get to rice from JSN, like oh my god. Yeah, like if I had if I had flowers, Addison, and JSN, I I would be inquiring with the rice manager. Flowers is the one I'm most bullish of of those three now. Well, for sure, but I still like rice more. Me too. Than flowers. Me too. Rookie rookie wide receivers. I think I'm Puka one, Dell two, Rice three. Flowers four, unless I'm missing somebody. I'm no, I'm a little I have read above Addison and JSN two actually. So I'm I'm like a smidge worried about Flowers one the domestic violence thing where he might end up having some kind of suspension. Um, not I don't think huge. he's going to get suspended. I, I, I mean, from what I, from what digging I could do, it doesn't seem like charges are coming. But but also he kind of has the issue. Um, that I was actually weirdly talking about with Herbert, where like the total volume for Zay Flowers like might actually never be good. He he might spend his entire career playing for a team that throws the ball 478 times um, a season, which is even if he's hyper efficient is a problem, and it's especially a problem because I also based off of watching him as a rookie, I don't think he is ever likely to like send Mark Andrews to the woodshed, you know, like Andrews, I think is still a a super premium target. Like actually similar to what the issue that Addison has with Jefferson, where he will, he will never be like a super dominant alpha guy. Rice actually could the next two years, he could work his way into, he's the dominant target guy because the Hollywood Brown signing doesn't work out. And Kelsey's 35 and then is the dominant target guy next year because Kelsey's either woodshedded or retired. Um, and they have he won't be woodshedded, but yeah, he, he might retire after next year. Like that seems yes. pretty likely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I I think that one's interesting. I, I also ended up moving Debo way down from um, where I had him when we did this a couple months ago, still higher than you guys on Debo. I, I we, we should be clear when we do these discussions so it's a big difference between where guys ranked like in a startup draft which is kind of what these things are trying to do versus where you should value them if you're a tanking team versus like a good team so like debo would be a guy if you have a team that's like really good but you're kind of just missing like maybe you're starting like deontay johnson as your wide receiver three or something and you just kind of need like i would trade the 109 for Debo in, in that spot. I would give up the, the Brian Thomas um, or, or JJ McCarthy or Brock Bowers, whomever you have at 109 spot in order to acquire him. You know, it's, it's once you kind of get past the top, wait, top 40 guys, like the, the valuation of them just gets so wild, like based on what your team actually needs. Yeah, I, I, I get that, but I don't know. Debo's 28. So you're starting to get yeah, a little. Yeah, you're not. You're it's just you're you you're you're an IUK, bro. You just you know. We we all can't. have Debo at the same spot now. Like basically, yeah. Davis has come back to earth. He has him at fifty nine. We're sixty two and sixty three. We're all. We're I get, all what there. I would say is like if you're in that spot, you know, you get a lot. Like, what does Keenan cost? You know, sitting out the window of age from like twenty seven to thirty is. is kind one of, of the valuable. more profitable things you can do, and maybe it, I feel like that age window has gotten earlier so maybe it's like really like a michael pittman that you need to get out of now yeah, michael I'm... pittman's already over the hill sell michael pittman for whatever you can get he's yeah. 26 and a half so yeah. at some point people are you know next year people are go, oh he's he's almost 28 that's right. how quick that that happens so Which... i actually do think he's a pittman's probably an amazing sell he just signed a contract you guys have him at 50 i've got him at 63 you guys want some michael <laughs> <laughs> he, he, probably, he probably is a sell, especially because, um, like, I mean, I was kind of joking about my level of certainty on the Brian Thomas pick. But if, if you watch any of the Chris Ballard press conferences, which, you know, I, I watch every single word of the Chris Ballard press conferences, like we're, we're taking a receiver in the first or the second round. I feel extremely confident about that. Um, or Bowers. It'll either be a wide receiver or a tight end. So I, I think that there there's going to be a potential Michael Pittman discount coming. Um, yeah, I would love for Matt Brock Bowers to go there and end up in a, a four tight end rotation with uh, Jelani Woods, Amal Ali Cox, That's and great. Kylan Granson. That's what we're we're all and Will Mallory. Ready. Don't forget Will Mallory. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's talk about Kyron Williams. I've got him at 61, 22. And then at one point, below. we're going to talk about the free agent signings. That that's yeah. That's yeah, yeah we'll eventually about. talk about the free agent signings. Yeah, <laughs> I still have some points on, uh, I still have a couple points on eighty Mitchell's yards per hour run. We'll circle back to you later. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, Kyron is like the quintessential you can lose so much by believing in him guy. And what do you like in a startup context? What do you even have to gain by take? I guess if you take Kyron Mitchell, you are just saying I'm points, taking ev- points I'm taking game. every points, old. Yeah. I'm taking I'm taking Devonte Adams. I'm taking Debo Samuel. I'm taking Kelsey. No, like, I don't think that's how to. That's well, how to do. You, you can have your your roster age out. Like you can have one piece. Build a. Here's how I think you build with Kyron Williams. You build it as a true like hero running back build. You build young wide receiver room. You build deep wide receiver room. You don't take another running back for like ever. And then you just like fill in your running back too with just like total dart throws and drags. And you're like, Kyron's going to carry this thing. I'm going to, I'm going to mine running back points somehow. I'm going to trade a third middle of the season for someone who merged or whatever I have to do. Justice and, Hill, Gus Edwards. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then I, you know, I'm not going to have anything invested in the running back position outside of Kyron, who's just like my true hero. Yeah, I mean, I think I think well, to be clear, Kyron's ADP right now is 40, and all of us are either around past the highest, and he's still a full round behind ADP on Kyron Williams. Yeah. So none of us are necessarily recommending um, draft to Kyron Williams. I totally agree with that. I, I would also say with Kyron, like kind of the fun of it is if you're if you're in a room with other people that are very much like in the Twitter universe and maybe have Kyron ranked more where we do than where the ADP does. The fun is you're, you're then drafting him not that differently than where people are drafting, say like Saquon Barkley, ideally, if that's, if that's the kind of room you're in and then you're getting probably similar production and you're kind of just free rolling however long it goes after that. Right. Cause like me, you know, we're all kind of drafting under the assumption that the shoe is going to drop at some point. And I think that's, wise like i think you should be drafting kyron with that baked in but it's kind of nice that like maybe the shoe never drops like maybe it's just arian foster and you get five years of this and you just keep free rolling it every year you know who the shoe might drop on a 27 year old running back what yeah how well, the shoe's how definitely is... dropping there that's what i'm saying you're like you're drafting you're getting one year of saquon and you're just free rolling the rest davis you've got barkley 49 and kyron 61 kyron's going oh, ahead of barkley in drafts right now so uh, defend yourself. <laughs> because because Barkley's not going to zero at age twenty eight. Barkley is Barkley is is very similar to Derrick Henry. He is or or Jacobs or whomever. He's going to keep getting by by just sheer value of being Saquon Barkley with all this money. You are you are going to get even even like fifteen and a half fantasy points per game in his age twenty nine season or whatever, like. All right, but you can go get 15 fantasy points per game fairly cheaply. I mean, if I want to go get David Montgomery, you know, that he's I mean, I'm 12 spots easily. lower than consensus on on Barkley. So don't make it out, don't make it out like I'm a I'm a Saquon Barkley um truther because I'm Well, not. you got him had a, you got him substantially at a Kyron, which I just is, This is what this is what we do is is Because because back, he should be substantially ahead of Kyron. ADP on and someone else is one round behind ADP on. We're like, "Why do you like this running back so much?" <laughs> Kyron Kyron has risk of not getting of not getting a repeated amount of volume this year. No one, no one wants From to who? get it. No. Who's taking that? Who was going to take Cam Akers' volume? Trey who was going to take? Who was going to take Todd Gurley's yeah. volume? Who was going to take? Fair, fair. Ronnie and running Rivers back started a goddamn game for the Rams. Ronnie Rivers year. isn't even there anymore. I'm pretty sure he was a free agent. <laughs> I haven't heard he him. They, they got, they, I'm, what I'm saying is that treating Kyrie. I mean, wasn't Cam Akers a round one two turn pick three years yes, ago? He was. Yeah, no, he was, yeah, but look, like, but like, but, I but get also, it. like, it's it's perfectly plausible that he would have even paid that off had he not like shredded his Achilles. Like, we really don't know. No, I, I, and t- point very well taken. My point is, and I, and I've been saying this the whole off season, which is that Kyron Williams could make me look like an absolute idiot, but if you just give me the base rate on all guys like that. 195 pounds don't play as rookies like just like oh it's it they are get insane amounts of volume for a weird team like you're just gonna win fading guys the year after that so many times generally i agree but i think there's a point at which i'd rather have him and it and it's basically like older dudes on the kind of end of their careers which barkley is at this point i mean he's 27 years old like that's you know, Josh Jacobs, you know, these guys who are 
we don't running back careers are short, you know, and now you're entering like year six, year seven. It's uh, it's concerning to me. That concern is higher than the concern I have that Kyron might just kind of be a one year wonder, which I also have concern about. But I mean, you're getting a guy who's going at the, you know, I think he's like pick 13, 14 in best ball drafts. Um, he still at this moment has a, a, a path to total control of that backfield. And it's not a strong running back class. So yes, they can spend, you know, a second or third round pick on, on one of these running backs. But honestly, there's two running backs in the entire class who, who like legit worry me. It's Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks who's coming off a torn ACL. So even in that scenario, he's not impacting until late season. Um, if they if they bring in a Jalen Wright or a Marshawn Lloyd, like not saying they can't take the backfield, but it's in most of those scenarios, like it's we're talking about 2025 that Marshawn Lloyd is really impacting Kyron Williams. They let trust me, Kyron Williams. So I, okay, let me the taking the backfield though. It's like Kyron Williams is not like he hasn't really demonstrated the type of path game ability we thought he would have in college yet. That's true. That's true. And he's not a very explosive runner. That's so true. also true. If Kyron Williams becomes the 65 and a 65-35, even if the backfield isn't taken from him, he he loses like his he loses a lot playing 95% yeah. of the snaps. Like if he's if he's the 65 or the 70 in a split backfield, like now he's just probably like the RB14 and we, we don't care about him even at all. It's now very he's, it's very he's fragile from Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, it's very fragile in that sense. Well, like I, I'll, I'll it explain all. It's fragility in a different way. It's week four. Saquon Barkley and Kyron Williams both roll their ankles, and they're gonna they 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 have a stint on the short term IR. Saquon Barkley comes back in week ten to exactly whatever workload he vacated, with absolutely no change in the distribution of those touches. Kyron Williams comes back, and um, Ray Davis has been averaging. 4.7 yards per carry um, in, in his stead. What is the workload distribution when Kyron well, Williams returns from this? Counterpoint, in 2023, Kyron Williams uh, goes in the short-term IR with a sprained ankle. Yeah, this um, already happened. And then they yeah, this ran was the Daryl conspiracy Henderson and Royce theory. Freeman. Yeah. And then Kyron Williams came back and he took over exactly the same role that he had. He, he No, he didn't. He, he did not play. He did not play anything close to what his 2023 role was. What? No. 2022. Dude. He comes We're talking back about 2023. No, I'm talking about in 2023. Like he started the season. He, talking about like Kyron. Thing with Akers. Then he becomes. Then he becomes the like, you know, undisputed bell cow. And then he springs. Oh, ankle I against, see. I, I know, see what you're saying. I, I was. Game. I was. And then, then he was out for like a month. And then he came back, and they're like, Royce oh, was good. God, like let's cut Daryl Henderson immediately. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. Well, because the I thing, to, I think the thing, switch it up. It, listen, I completely agree with Jacob's point that this is fragile. We need him to be like a total bell cow. But McVeigh tends to roll out a true bell cow running back. And I think that's that's part of it for me of like, I'm not as worried about a split getting forced here as I would be mm -hmm. in another situation because we have years now of McVeigh. Like if he has a guy that he trusts, he throws him out there. And does it feel great to be like, like the most bullish on – fancy Devin Singletary of us three like yeah it it does not feel great <laughs> but but I do think there's there's oh my here. god fancy Devin Singletary and it's so true too it's exactly, That's what he is. exactly what he he's is. literally just fancy Devin Singletary so I think go in eyes wide open here like this is the bull I'm the bull <laughs> And that's how yeah, I view them. Like, worth emphasizing that the bull is around behind ADP yeah that's true I'm the bull of, in this room but I I think if you're going with Kyron, like, like I said before, I mean, I would, I would put it on his shoulders in the same way you're hoping McVeigh does. Of like, you carry this running back room, and yep. um, if he, if he ends up not being what we hoped, one advantage of that is that you can still then really use those 15 points. <laughs> if you, if you make him carry the running back room and he's only 15 points, yep. that hurts. But at least there's 15 points that you really need, and and you're hoping to. To win with uh with your wide receiver room anyway i would even add um and i wrote about this on thinking about thinking after the first week of free agency i think that's like probably should be the dominant approach right now regardless of who your top running back is now i would prefer in dynasty probably the only high-end running backs that i actually think are worth their price are Bijan robinson 
and Brees Hall. And after that, I become immediately less interested in the running back position. But you can extend that out if you want, especially with Jameer Gibbs. I, I do think like right now we're kind of seeing this thing where the teams that value the running back position are are either investing in a true like workhorse, you know, that's going to take everything, or they're investing in multiple dynamic playmakers that kind of limits the fantasy value of the running back room, but probably really boosts the total expected fantasy points of the running back room. And then other teams are just not interested in the running back position at all. And then what we're going to see from that is like, not very good running backs leading it that just aren't capable of scoring that many points or running backs that aren't very capable of leading a running back room. And so you're going to get some kind of split and you're going to get these low XFP backfields. And I think the resulting effect of all this is just, we're going to see, like, I think I'm we're moving towards, I think a more bimodal distribution of points at the position in which there's going to be some truly elite players. And then I think there's going to be a lot of guys who you can just sort of have a streamable RB twos. So if I was in a dynasty startup right now, that guy would be pretty comfortable clicking the button on a Brees or a Bijan or, or Gibbs. But then I, I, to me, I just want like three or four of whatever the grossest other running backs people leave me. So whether that's an old man, Aaron Jones or James Conner, Joe Mixon, or whether that's like a flyer on a Chase Brown or it's Zach Moss or Stephen Singleton, like whoever, just like, I don't even care. Like I, I'll let half of those guys off the board and then I'll just pick a couple at the end and then just kind of, put it together but I, I think we're gonna see like I, I would expect we see a lot of running backs live in like the 11 to 14 points per game range this year and if you can just kind of stream them through then you're just gonna get by okay if you could get Kyron Williams for the two what what would Kyron go for just in terms of draft picks Wait, well you're not gonna be? like it the answer to that is is if you look at the ADP right now he goes yeah. ahead of the 106 so Okay, mm -mm. so would you rather mm -mm. let's get let's even make it the 108. <laughs> would you rather trade the 108 or two thirds for Joe Mixon? For me, not even close. Two thirds for Joe. Oh, Mixon. It's two thirds for Joe Mixon. Yeah, for me. Yeah, I mean that's that's correct. Um, and now I'm making sure I don't have Kyron. I've got Car Kyron ahead of the 109, so I've got him ahead of Brian Thomas. Um, are you guys in on that? Or is that's that also what I have. Yeah, just, that's yeah, exactly where I have to. I have McCarthy, then Kyron, and then Brian Thomas. I, okay. I do not have that. And I, if Kyron was the running back one in this class, which he totally would be, I would still have him behind Brian. I'd have him be the 110, probably. I, I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I've got I've got him two picks ahead of Brian Thomas. Um, that That's fine. The, the point you're making is correct. Like, you're better off just sending the two thirds for Mixon, I think. I mean, Mixon's going outside the top 100, or at least he's in our ranks. We have him. I've got him 110, Davis 105, Jacob 117. There's, like a, whole, there's a whole retirement home I have here, right? Like I yeah. have like Derek Henry, Alvin Kamara, Joe Mixon, Aaron Jones, Tony Pollard, James Conner, and David Montgomery, all back to back to back from 115 to 121. And they're just, they're just chilling. They're just available. Mixon, Mixon's not yet 28, though. And so, like, to me, I'm like, he's not 28 yet, and he's on the Texans versus he's a little, you know, he's he's above 27, and he's on the Eagles, and we got to pay, like, 50 picks higher for Barkley? I mean, Barkley would be – I would just frame what Davis said, but just replace Kyron with Barkley. <laughs> and, you know, like, literally, you're getting younger guys. Like, you can go get Ramondre. Uh, we have him at – I have him at 112, Davis 101, Jacob 112. I mean – I have concerns about Ramondre after last year, but like he's 26, you know, and it's just a massive discount. So I, this kind of early, just outside the top 100 and like your results may vary depending on, you know, who has them in your league, but there's lots of guys like you're not, it's, you're not gonna have trouble finding some of these discount running backs. I think, yeah, I, I, I want to add a couple of these guys cheap and, and play it that way, or even just one of them cheap. I think, I mean, just, um, like holistically as, as a philosophy, you know, like if your heuristic is just don't pay for premium running back production, you probably just win. Right. I mean, even, even the path to Brees Hall or Jameer Gibbs letting us down is like, just so obvious because they're running backs. They just, they lose. We say this every time we do this show, a, a win for a running back is just not cratering in value. Because most of the time what happens is running backs basically do what you expect them to do. They get the points you right. want them to get. And then the market says, it's over, brother. You know? Right. Like, you're, you're and my nihilistic response to that is, like, instead of trying to avoid 
that is just just accept that and you just, just yeah. say, well it's going to zero but it's going to zero with aaron jones and i bought him for the 302 so who gives exactly right like that's yeah they're expiring assets you know they're they're they're, 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 they're one use right like you you like james, it's a james one connor was an thing. expiring asset four years ago and he's yet to expire so you just, you just yeah you just need to keep using it right exactly but you when you when you open up the package you know don't expect it's going to last very long kind of thing um I don't know if that analogy made any sense at all. Uh, no, let's. It, yeah. it didn't. Uh, the other big free agency thing was her cousin signing, which we should get to. Yeah, um, let's do that. Drake London jumps up. Uh, I've got him at twenty three. Right. Davis twenty six. Jacob twenty seven. So we're pretty aligned. Uh, he, I mean, just an obvious gainer in value. He is uh, rising up a lot in best ball, as you would expect. Um, Kyle Pitts obviously is also rising. I wonder if they end up drafting someone, which would be kind of interesting, sort of shake this up even further. But, I mean, any pushback on just the general enthusiasm and joy that that uh, drafters are finding in Atlanta now? You know, the Slappies are going to be all in on the Falcons this year. Like, Darnell Mooney's going to end up being the wide receiver 52. Kyle Pitts right now is the tight end six. I, I, bet, I, I bet if we really believe we could get him ahead of Dalton Kincaid and maybe even ahead of uh, – uh, who's the tight end for? Of Andrews. Yeah. But no, oh, Kittle. Andrews. Pitts over Andrews. We have jumped the shark. I, in, I you want best ball or in Dynasty? In, in best ball right now is what I'm thinking. Okay. That would be nice. Um, I, I just, I think Dynasty, it ends up. I'm jumping, I guess. Yeah. London ends up being a 2 3 turn pick. Abijan ends up being like the fifth overall pick. London's a 2 3 turn pick. Um, Pitts ends up being a sixth round pick. Mooney gets steamed up, whatever, Pitts if they take a rookie wide receiver. Uh, Kirk Cousins. I, I I bet we could get Kirk to the like ahead of Purdy. I, I bet we Kirk, could get Kirk. Kirk is going to have an egregious ADP, and the reason why is because all of the people who are going to be drafting London and Pitts, and all of the yeah, people who care way too much stack. about stacking, is a circle. So yeah. like all of all of the backwards hat wearing best ball bros, I sit here in my backwards hat. Um, like we're going to be the ones drafting London and Pitts, and we're going to be like, we gotta get Kirk Cousins on this. You, team. Imagine, so, imagine like, drafting be... London and imagine drafting London and Pitts and not completing the stack, dude. <laughs> Can't do it. I'm I'm happy not to complete the stack. He's coming off a, a torn Achilles. Is it his plant leg or is it not his plant leg, dude? It's what, very very. When important. in the year was it? You know, it's it was pretty late in the year. Uh, I've certainly heard, later than Rogers, anyway. I've heard. Well, as Dave is the heard... once famously said to a. Multi-millionaire, have fun staying poor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I want to, I want to play it through the weapons. You know, I don't. Why do I need Kirk, this this old distributor? What's the point of that? Because Achilles are the new AC, uh, the new ACLs, and and a torn ACL is like the new sprained ankle. What's like, the evidence you, for Achilles are the new? Do we ACL? care at all about Achilles who's come back from an Achilles like, that we pocket quarterback? Do you? You've been duped by Aaron Rodgers. There's no, there's no evidence of of Achilles being the new ACL. It's it's bad. Dude, Rodgers was on the active. Rodgers was on the active roster last year, brother. I know that because he's doing whatever the fuck he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't play. I don't know. Um, I just think I, I just like do we? Why do we have to care about an Achilles here for a block of quarterback? Like okay, like, Akers, I understand we care a lot for running backs. But like Acres came back. Receivers come back from it. Yeah, I, and then I guess he came back. He came back and got traded. Why does why does why is Kirk Cousins a closer comparable to Cam Akers than Kevin Durant? Uh, uh, well, I didn't know you were going to go cross sport on me. Body bag me with Kevin well, Durant. Well, look, Kevin Durant is just that he has old man game, and Kirk Cousins has old man game. They just they Justice, just go in Justice there and they Hill. find their spot and they hit twenty foot jumpers. Justice, Justice Hill, Hill came, came back. back. Deontay Foreman yeah. came back. Yeah, it's. Here's here's my only point is I wouldn't be like all that interested in Kirk Cousins at like a 35 year old pocket passer to begin with. And now he's coming off a torn Achilles, which could hurt a little bit. So why can't I just play it through the weapons? I'm not. This is not an anti London or pit. I'm highest on London of the three of us. All right, yeah, dude. So, you, you show up. You show but, up in the not final really. That's just not like Drake the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am that, well, that's what stuff. I do in in best ball and stuff. I take Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Yeah. And it's like whatever like i'll when kirk plays well like my weapons will do well and then i'm gonna get a guy who runs around a little bit more sure i agree with yeah. all that what do you guys think on pits in the tight end landscape now like i so i i have all well, five the, of the my time to buy him was four months literally ago, ranked in a row like i have i have one through five 
in a row with no players in between them. I think I might have um, the same thing. I have Laporta and then uh, some wide, uh, four wide receivers and then Andrews, Bowers, McBride, Kincaid, Pitts. So I have, let me pull mine up here. Cause I, I honestly don't 100% remember the order that I actually have them. Um, I have, here we go. Yeah. So I have Bowers at 34, Laporta 35, McBride 36, Pitts 37, Andrews 38. And I, in my heart, like in, in my own rankings, I would take Kyle Pitts the tight end too, but I, I don't, I don't feel as good about selling that to the people. My reasoning for that is just, I think the ceiling is still pretty unmatched by Laporta and McBride um, in terms of his, like how he's used in terms of how deep he's able to be used. And in terms of the ability to just break the position, but I also am like a little bit, my spirit's broken after selling people the same story about Kyle Pitts for two years and, and leaving the wilderness where like, I, I just can't look someone in the face and be like, I compel you to draft him ahead of Sam Laporta who has a perfectly clean profile and just did a great rookie year, but I can look myself in the face and, and do that and live with the consequences. Uh, and I probably would, to be honest. The thing with Pitts I mean, that's tough is he's not the best receiver on his team. And this really doesn't have a path to being that, you know? And that's like, so... Well, neither does Sam Laporta. I neither mean, does Sam Laporta. St. Brown is, I think, wider than Pitts in London. That's fair. That's fair just because St. Brown's so good. Honestly, like, I think, to me, this offseason is partly going to be about Mark Andrews, who you have at 38 and I have at 36, Jacob, so we're pretty close, but... I mean, this dude is still the number one on his team. And I know he's 28 and a half. So for Dynasty, you know, you, you need to factor that in. But by by elite tight end standards, that's not that old. Like he could have like another four years, no problem. And I hate being the guy who's like, 28 year old's gonna be awesome, gonna be elite for six years. You know, that's you almost always want to fade that. But like he's set up well this year. Um I, I'm hammering him in best ball. My God. Like I oh take him, God, you yeah. get him in the fifth round sometimes. It's nuts. Crazy. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that maybe best ball is just the way to play because you're getting a massive, massive discount on him there. Um, and you know, you'll win plenty if he has a big year. But I still think like, you know, and I, I you agree, Jacob, but he should be in that conversation. Davis, you're a little bit bearish on Andrews compared to us. Or what's the worry just the age davis low on an oklahoma sooner Imagine. yeah it, honestly honestly probably just like uh where he well one i have mcbride ahead of him um age wise but i also too, uh, right? noted the the only one the only believer here um you do too, yeah. in any of these running backs in saquon and in kenneth walker and in Pittman. i think probably i should rework this to move andrews up because i i would i would prefer andrews to Pittman in in, you, we, no, you can't yeah, be taking Saquon Barkley over Mark Andrews. Like, that's that's, that's also absurd. probably true. So I need to move. I need to move they're Andrews almost, and they're almost the same up. age, but one plays running back. Yeah, I mean, I have like we talked about Kyron and stuff. I've got Andrews like fifteen picks above Kyron. Like I have him twenty two picks above Kyron. Well, then yeah. you win. God damn it. So, so there we go. That, I've, I've always, I, I've always been a Mark Andrews slap. He hasn't really worked the last two years, but I, I feel, keep going back to the well. Can I obviously can we talk about the, running back? Oh, good. Yeah. Well, just the issue with Andrews is the, the constant injury stuff. I mean, that's the, that's the only thing is that the dude just like never finishes a season, but you know, so they're always weird injuries. It's is always that, like an is angle actually here. True. Yes. Well, yes, bro he broke his ankle. That's, I mean, that's not great. Right, but like, is is that has that been actually a constant throughout his career? Like, I don't re actually recall a lot of other major injuries, Mark Andrews. Well, one of the injuries was uh, to Lamar, actually, and that was yeah. Was you know, that's a, that's actually a good point. Is that he had two lost seasons where he yeah. was catching the ball from? I mean, he he his one only, of them wasn't lost. One of them he was like the guy before you last year. He never what? Yeah, yeah. But before last year, the most games he'd ever missed in a season was two. All right, so I am, I am just, I am just bull. I, I did just do, I did just do the him catching passes from Snoop Huntley counted as a, as a, as a lost season. For that did feel like a lost season. Yeah. Um, all right, I, I'm a little bit that I had to be the running back uh, defender. So now I want to talk about Kenneth Walker and make and put you guys on the back foot. Kenneth Walker, I'm, I not, can, can, I'm ahead. I'm ahead of consensus on Kenneth Walker. I'm the Kenneth Walker guy. So. <laughs> Why? Because he's fucking good, Pat. Is he? Watch, 
Yes. Is he good? Watch the tape, dude. Watch the tape. Now he's got Sam Howell. He's got Sam Howell. He's got Game Sam over. Howell. Oh, no. Oh, no. I just saw something I didn't want to see. I'm higher than Davis on Ken Walker. Yeah, because Kenneth Walker is good. That sucks so No, much you're not. Aren't you? Aren't you? You're I'm 57 not? and Davis is 52. Is what I see. Oh, thank God. I read the sheet wrong. Yeah, man. That guy sucks. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker is a good player. I think that the new guy coming in from Baltimore is it's very obvious that they're going to continue to tilt very run heavy. Sure. Maybe he will be in a 50, 50 ish 60, 40 with Sharps. That's fine. I think he's a much better, much better explosive runner than Charbonnet. Like Charbonnet to me is just, generic creator running back a- after watching him. Um, uh, I as, agree with you. As a I agree with you. Here's the thing, though. Here's the running backs who had a lower success rate than Kenneth Walker last year. I, I promise I don't care. I promise Miles you. Sanders, this is good. <laughs> Miles Sanders, care. Jamal Williams, Joshua Kelly, end of list. <laughs> because they, those Ken guys, Walker, those like guys. The Ken Walker experience, like the Ken Walker discussion is, is, is honestly just like one of the worst the fantasy community has because every Ken Walker discussion is this. Some guys like, I watched him and he looks pretty good, man. And the other guy's like, uh, actually, his success rate is pretty low. And then that's that's the discussion. Like they, if we just we go in circles every single time. All right, look, look I mean, I get it. You know, he's an explosive runner. By the way, who had more rush yards ever expected last year, Joshua Kelly or Kenneth Walker? Because it's Joshua. I, Kelly. Well, you based on you asking the question, I'm 100 percent sure it's Joshua Kelly. <laughs> who who had more, Joe Mixon or Kenneth Walker? Deontay Foreman or Kenneth oh. Walker? Zach Charbonnet or Kenneth Walker? This Devin is, Singletary this is starting to reduce my confidence in the metric, to be honest. Dude, he was not explosive last year, and we can count on him. He had minus 27 rush yards over expected, so it's pretty easy to find. I can go on and on and on. There's a million yeah. dudes who had more rush yards over expected than him because he was in the negative you know, by a decent amount. The, the thing we can feel confident about is that he's not a consistent runner because he's also had a terrible success rate as a rookie. You are paying a youth premium for middling production. Go get Joe Mixon. My okay, so I I mean, first of all, I, I'm pretty certain that I'm like way behind ADP on Ken Walker. And I'm uh like where does he actually go in drafts? Oh no, I'm not. Okay, apparently he's actually really dropped. Um, so I'm actually ahead of ADP on Ken Walker, so I stand corrected. He's at 61 in ADP, and I'm 57. So my apologies. Would have been such a bad uh, look if I was actually above two. <laughs> it's like um, sweating nervously. As well, you, this is this is know. shocking because it's the first time in my entire life I've been ahead of the market in Ken Walker in any format. So that's that's curious, I guess, to me. Um, my case for Ken Walker is that I, I fully agree with all the success rate stuff. Like I've I've made that case in the past. I think it remains true. I think it's always been true. I think it was even true in college that he had some vision and decision making issues. Um, my case for him is that it's just frankly re- irrespective of what the numbers say. Like you, you just watch the games, and it's very obvious that he does some things very well. Like he's an incredible tackle breaker. That's, that's true. He, he like has a lot of juice, and yep. he provides things that few running backs provide. I, I feel very confident in saying that, and I think that that at least gives him an interesting floor ceiling combo. In that, I think because he provides something that I heard floor there, I didn't hear ceiling. Than, well, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to the ceiling in a second. But it's weaker than the floor, so I'm starting with that, and then maybe <laughs> hoping someone interrupts me. The floor case is he provides something that he's been able to provide better than any backfield mate he has for his career until he no longer is explosive, and that that bakes him, I think, some level of a security that to me, like a Kyron Williams doesn't have, where like Kyron Williams doesn't have that trump card trait that Ken Walker has. The issue is the ceiling, in that you know the receiving profile is not there part of the rushing profile is lacking. But I do think when you have a guy like that, who the physical attributes are unmatched and it's just a matter of, can he improve his decision-making? It's like, what, what if one year he just does, or what if one year a coach just doesn't care? Um, and they're like, we're just going to throw you 50 screens because you excel out there in the open field. Like it's, it's possible. Like I doesn't Ken Walker, like imbue you some sort of fear of missing out when you watch him compared to so many like blah oatmeal players. Like I, 
for me, like kind of quote unquote winning this war on Ken Walker and his ADP falling to the point where I'm slightly ahead of market on him. Like I, I'm kind of excited because I, I feel I've been very nervous as a Ken Walker fader for most of my life. It's a kind of exciting to be on the other side of this where don't like, you I like get to, to hit dingers, kind of dude? Don't, don't you like to watch someone hit home runs? Like that's what Kenneth Walker does. He's gonna strike out he's a Adam lot. Adam Dunn. Yeah, yeah, he's Adam Dunn. Yeah, but the the thing is that NFL coaches like usually hate that, and the guy that drafted him is gone. So yeah, the, the new coaching staff thing just... comes with some real risk. You know, NFL coaches generally want to be able to rely on the run game. I, I view it the other way. Like I would, if I was building a team, I'd rather have a Kenneth Walker who is like, if we're going to run the ball, let's at least have some explosive plays. Yeah, let's at least have game. a guy who can hit some home runs. Yeah, like w- w- there's not that much of a difference between two yards and four yards, really. You know, there's a big difference if you can rip off a couple 20, 30 yard runs you know, every so often. So I, I agree, but we know NFL coaches really care about the difference between two and four yards. Now they're behind schedule. God damn it, Kenneth. I, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts his, his, uh, it actually hurts the floor. So yeah, if he's but, a, but the a high floor the running back with a, is, is Zach Charbonnet, who is just going to, who's going to be like fine. I, I don't know, whatever. How many like, times have we seen a fine, boring running back take work from a guy we like better though? That's that's a fantasy story. I just I think Kenneth I think the evidence of Ken Walker is that he his coaches generally do really like him though. Like I don't think Mike McDonald's going to come in and be like I hate this guy. Maybe we've well, only a seen that once. Thing. We saw that with one coaching staff and they're gone. I I like I pretty frequently do the the open therapy session on this show, but I, I think what I'm realizing with Ken Walker is it's somewhat psychological. Where when I really like a player my assumption is that the coach will hate them. And I'm very trepidatious about that. But since I've never really liked Ken Walker, I'm just like, ah, coaches will probably like this guy. Cause I, I don't associate him with the other boom bus guys that I liked. I associate him with players that I don't like. <laughs> so I assume coaches will like him. I mean, it's, it's, it's Deandre Swift esque, you know, yeah. and we're always so worried it's, about it's that. like that. It's like that. But, but, Kenneth Walker is not going to piss the coach off in in disregarding the assignment. He's going to go to what is blocked. He if it, if you got to run, yes, yes, no, absolutely. he will disregard no, the assignment. A... The difference is that he's tough. Ken Walker, sure, there we go. Ken That's Walker's more what I'm mistakes saying. is he's like, look at that open lane over there. No, I'm going to run over this big defender instead, and and maybe cost my team yards, but it'll look cool. DeAndre Swift is like. Look at that tackle. Ah, there's a guy 10 yards down there. I'm just going to run out of bounds for a four yard <laughs> yeah, That's block. what DeAndre Swift does. He runs away <laughs> from everyone. It's like, no, you yeah. have to go forward, DeAndre. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's exactly right. But I think I, I don't do this analysis myself, but I'm pretty sure I saw something of like him hitting the wrong hole at a fair, at a, like a very high oh. rate. I would he, believe it because he, all he wants is, is like, daylight. That's not how Ken Walker thinks. Like yeah. he's, not, he's not thinking about the holes. He's not thinking about the design of the play. He's thinking about the end zone. And, you know, thinks about the design of the play. The guys who design the play. Him in the end zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But here's know. the bull case, though. You mentioned Swift, and I like, I, I like, I consider myself hater in chief on DeAndre Swift and how he plays the game. I, I find him so frustrating, and yet, while teams continue to give up on him, other teams continue to value him for reasons that I don't understand, but they do nonetheless. Like the Chicago Bears. We're like the first thing we're doing in free agency is securing this like value subtracting running back to come lead our backfield. Yeah, everyone and, and likes he's, DeAndre. Swift he's going to get two years team. of a commitment on the Chicago That's Bears. Right. Like we like, can I think, fix and him. I think it's insane. I, I can be That's the guy insane. who fixes him. That's what people think yeah, about DeAndre Swift. Right? That's the yeah. thing. Like these these NFL general it's, it's men, are Bryce divorced, and are all like have some sort of issue where they work sixteen hour days. Like these are the most I can fix them personality types ever and they think they can fix deandre swift and ken walker is a better more physical version of deandre swift but the seahawks give up on him Some, somebody's giving him a chance i promise you yeah but guys we just talked about this group of running backs that's like available for for i mean not free but outside the top easily outside the top 100 a deep group from so, from from a thousand feet, from thirty thousand feet or whatever, I totally agree with this idea that like running back production is largely replaceable. You could just go trade a couple third round picks for Joe Mixon, and it's just like one. I just like Ken Walker, and I'm biased towards him. But at a certain point, there also is a difference between thirteen point six fantasy points per game and fifteen point five fantasy points per game, and I, I am comfortable making the bet that Walker is more likely to provide those seasons than some of the true dregs. Yeah. Of James Look, let's, let's get on track here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let Pat just like shadow boxes here. Imagine if there's all these elite ceiling players 
just languishing behind Ken Walker in our ranks. Right. Like here, here's some of the league winners that you have ranked above him, including you know oh, no. Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah. Um, Pacheco actually has a ceiling, but it, it, Jared I really just we're coming off a season where Pacheco's winning best ball tournaments. Is that is that not appealing to you? What the, 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 who had more points per game this year? I'm actually asking. Maybe it is Pacheco, but I Pacheco I was, was crushing down the stretch. Okay, so we're just we're we're relying all on sequencing. We have two guys the same draft. No, I'm relying on single points. game upside. This guy can actually put together games that win me stuff. Kind of based, based on what is Pacheco's single game upside higher? Like other than is other the than games, the, the, game, the upside that I've seen him produce in single games. What do you mean? What? But like you're you're talking about how he did it in terms of a best ball context in terms of sequencing, but like, is, does he actually have more high ceiling games over the course of his career than Ken Walker? I believe, I believe he's, right uh, yeah, I don't have those. I doubt this. We should look it up. I believe he does because he's, okay. I don't know. That's, that's my, uh, okay. So point points, points per game. I'm just speaking out of my ass. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I could easily be proven wrong. What, what do you want? You want 20, 25 or 30 is your cutoff. Uh, let's do 25. Okay. So I'm looking Ken Walker in his career has, Three, which is not not a lot. Um, Pacheco has one. Two, oh well, okay. Uh, Walk has also three. Sanders, but they are Jacob, all this, this year, is an this is an insane all this argument. Year. Okay, yeah. 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 All right, maybe. Listen, I don't think I'm particularly high on uh, Pacheco, but yeah, he's coming off a much stronger season, so it, that seems like a winning Jared argument. Goff. Hmm? Jared Goff over Ken Walker is like Jared like, Goff's about to get or, re-signed, dude. Yeah, you got you super. Right, give me him all day over Kenneth Walker. Okay, this is you guys have all of the quarterbacks so much lower than I do at the top. I, I have the, I like have those two. I have Jared those two Goff. guys back to back. I have Goff. I have Goff and Walker like literally back to back. Okay, keep coming. Where, I'm where I'm, 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 I'm I'm hit so far. I've dodged every bullet. Go ahead. I, I, I disagree with you on this Pacheco thing. Like the Pacheco Walker profile is basically the same profile, but one of them has like no staying power. Like if the, the chief like Pacheco is is there by virtue of the Chiefs' kindness. Like for Pacheco for is a year play. three player, so he's going to be under contract entering 2025. He's on the as Chiefs. He's Ken coming Walker. off a much stronger year than Kenneth Walker. So based on based on what? Based on like Based on the the, the I mean, he's just much point. more based likely on, to be replaced. Pacheco is though. Based on his scoring and advanced stats, Pacheco had a better year last year than Kenneth Walker. Do you do you when you watch Pacheco play and you watch Ken Walker play? Do you do you come away with to the conclusion that Isaiah Pacheco is better at football? I mean, I know he hits the he stomps on the ground harder. Walker he barely stomp on stomps on the ground at all. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, I don't really I don't care. I, I think they're both like, the they're both like me from between those two. From, they're from both not particularly things. high ceiling running backs. So I'm yeah. like, who's gonna who's gonna produce? Like I feel better about Pacheco this year as as, as does the market. He goes ahead of him in best ball, um, which I'm not really taking Pacheco in best ball. I think he's overpriced. I think he goes ahead. Maybe I'm wrong. They go very similarly. Yeah, um, Pacheco does go ahead. Okay, he goes good. ahead, which I think is bad. That, that helps my case. Um, the 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 other thing is like who's which of these running backs is likely to be worth like you know a very high pick in dynasty and the answer is neither neither of them ever will be right so i just want like then okay let's let's go to situation then because there's not much ceiling here so who do i feel better about in terms of the floor and it's Pacheco he's on the chiefs he's under contract on his rookie deal it's a weak running back class they haven't brought anybody in like he it's going to it's a similar situation. It's status quo. I agree with you. He's not like very good. He's not protect. He's not all that protected long term. But it's a year to year game. Like I can get production out of Pacheco, and he's going to have some appeal the year after this. Walker, I feel like I'm taking on more risk because I, you know, I, I can't tell someone after a down season that hey, he's on the Chiefs at least because he, he's not on the Chiefs. He's on this weird Seattle team that might not have any plans at quarterback after the season. And it will be two bad years in the advanced stuff if and three in success rate if if Walker has a bad year. So I don't know. I'm just like if the ceiling's not there, then I want to go with other up. Like I, I have uh I've got Walker ranked above like Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks, but like I bet those guys I bet we have both those guys ranked above Kenneth Walker after this year. Is that is that crazy? 
Um, I don't think it's crazy. I don't think that's the median outcome. What about one of them? Is one of them ranked above them? As the yeah, I would, I would say like, like yeah, if I was probably, setting the over-under, yeah. like if I was setting the over-under and I had to choose between 0.5 or 1.5 out of those two, like I would choose 0.5 with the juice on the over. Like I think that's, that's yeah, one of them probably ends up ranked above them. All right, we gotta we gotta wrap up because uh, we've we've gone on long long I, enough. I actually it's it's I actually have the heart out this time, not uh, not Jacob, although I think he probably Fair has enough. one too. I, I also mean, look, have a pretty we, hard out. But. We've got we've got uh, what thirty eight days I think until um, the the NFL draft, and then we will have a lot more new stuff to argue about pretty soon. Oh yeah, I don't even know if we need new stuff. We've got. It's about. Yeah, we. Yeah, we didn't. We, we didn't even. We didn't even get. We touched on like two of the free agent signings. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't even get to George we Pickens. Discuss. We didn't even get to arguing about George Pickens yet. <laughs> we didn't even talk but about like, Justin Fields, uh, the backup quarterback on the. On the well, Steelers. let the record hey, can we do, show. Can we do five minutes on Justin Fields. Yeah, let the record show that the guy who had him ranked thirty spots after consensus since we started this project ended up being right. Congratulations! That was that was sharp as hell. Uh, Impression. Yeah. I where, where do we have Justin Fields now? We should we should actually touch on that for two minutes at least. I've got him at 150, so I, I'm much lower than, than you, Jacob. But you're at 83. I, I just have him unranked. Yeah. I don't think I ranked him. But no, you have him at 122. Unranked? I mean, what's the point? He's in the well, he's Sam Darnold He's taking that job. The, the point is he's going to start this year, and then yeah. he's immediately going to be scoring at a top 10 rate. And then, like... Also, like you guys are on Twitter, right? Like you understand the level of trutherism that surrounds this guy. Like when this mm. guy starts two games and has two 22 mm. point performances, you're going to be able to trade him for a first round pick so easily. And that's that's not going to be the case for not for most players ranked outside the top 80. All right, Jacob just like fully sold me. I'm going to move him up to like 105. Not me. Not sold. I'm not sold. I'm not sold because he's going to spend the rest of his career uh playing as a backup or in a competition but but you got to agree like he's starting games this year like russ sucks sure maybe he'll russ maybe he'll start game. maybe he'll start a couple games um before they trade a conditional seventh round pick to get mason rudolph back from the titans <laughs> possible <laughs> who's the third who's the third string quarterback Definitely uh, i don't think they have one right now i don't know if they have one Steelers yeah. signed all the quarterbacks, so there's none left. Steelers are lads. Uh, their third quarterback. Yeah, they don't have one. So whoever that is, that guy's going to start some games. Um, <laughs> no, come on. Yeah. Man. Justin Fields, by the way, I mean, this dude. Buddy, like... the NFL said the price we are willing to pay for Justin Fields is a conditional sixth round pick. He skipped Carson Wentz getting traded for a conditional second. He He went to the commander's Carson Wentz trade. That's where the NFL valued him. You're completely At a right. Point. You're completely right. But like he, but the thing about the NFL that we know is like they don't always they make plans and then reality hits those plans, right? This is like we had to hear about Miles Sanders' contract last year. Then reality hit, yeah. and it's like, oh god, Chuba Hubbard actually looks a lot better. Let's play him. That's the way this shit always goes. I don't know what the NFL was doing this offseason. This is one of like the worst managed situations I can yeah, remember awful. in the NFL. Like he is worth more than a conditional six, and the NFL blew it. Like this is the Raiders yeah, are I'm not sure he, so I'm not, so fucking stupid. They're going in with Gardner Minshew. They're not even gonna be able to draft somebody. They have Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell as a backup plan. They Gardner could have Minshew probably is better at winning six. games. No, do not no. do not say that in my presence. No, I not. watched every single that Gardner Minshew played last year for my team, and he sucks. He's horrible. I, I'm no, he's terrible. Justin Fields is also pretty bad. Like I'm not a Justin Fields defender. Like I, I think that he's vastly overrated by the fantasy community. But he is. He has traits you can't teach. He has functioned as a mid to below average NFL starting quarterback before in EPA per dropback, and he has easily. More developed, definitely one of the best 32 quarterbacks on with Gardner Minshew or with Sam Darnold or any of these goofs. Like, I it's I totally agree. I, I think that I, I think both that the people who thought that the Bears should have kept him are insane. I but agree, the, yeah. But that NFL teams like being like, I would rather hold I'm gonna on to let I'm gonna let Jacob continue. I have to go, Jacob. Okay. You can you can do this for as long Pretty as you need. I love everyone. Okay. Bye. All right, love you too, Dave. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I just think teams 
the teams jumped the shark on this. Like, like, yes, the Raiders should have absolutely given up like a fourth with the conditions turned into a third. The way I view it is that teams were afraid. To me, this is fear driven. Teams were afraid mm-hmm. to tie themselves to Justin Field and have this be like we're selling you the fan base that Justin Fields is the answer and we don't really believe that he is. And so now I'm going to lose my job because I sold you Justin Fields and you you're upset with me for that. Rightfully so. Right. Right. But that's not the way it played out when he's available for conditional sixth. Now, like I'm, if I'm a Raiders fan, I'm fucking pissed that you weren't in that conversation. How is you as a GM, weren't able to get us Justin Fields for a conditional six, then instead got us Gardner Mitchell. Like I'm already out for your head now. Like it is the Broncos, the like the Broncos do this. The Patriots are going to take Jaden Daniels third overall instead of a sixth for Justin Fields. That's insane. It, exactly. The Patriots, the Broncos, like if this was the price, you got to pay the price. Like it makes no sense to me. I mean, he's, it's like, he's getting treated as a pure backup. As Davis said, he is one of the best 32 quarterbacks in the league. He was, it, you know, his stuff last year was actually pretty close to Russ. Like if you look over the last couple of years, yeah. like his his efficiency is pretty close to Russ's. But Russ is thirty five, and this is a dude entering year four. Like there, it's called upside, and 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 we should be we should factor it in. Like it just makes no sense that you wouldn't pay a conditional six to this guy. The Steelers crushed it. The Steelers are paying the Russ that nothing. Was sharp too. Yeah, they're paying nothing for Russ. They're literally letting someone else pay this guy's contract, and then they get fields completely for free. So it's a it's a good that, situation. They, they should have like a fourth and a sixth for a third. They, they should have Kenny Pickett a fourth and a sixth for a third Fields and Russ, and no monetary difference. I mean, that's that's magic. It won't matter. Like they're still going to go nine and eight, but it's it's better. It's pretty cool. I I think by the end of the year, that's Fields' team. And he heads yeah, into 2025 as a starter. That's totally that's my bet. But I guess it depends. Do you think they pick up the fifth year? Like, what do they do there? I think no. I think I think no. Yeah. I think that they so, actually think they played not. this really smart. Like, I think I've seen people criticize them not calling it a competition. I think it's kind of sharp what they've done. Just like take the pressure off. You don't pick up the fifth year. Let yeah. Russ start. That's that's like a fine decision, and then see how it goes. I think Field starts probably by around the middle of the year because I think Russ is not going to play particularly well and then and then see what fields can do like if he's deplorable then you're not stuck like the panthers screwed themselves so bad when they did that with sam darnold right um where they pick up the fifth year right and then they couldn't get rid of him and they had to keep him on the roster which really restricted what they could do at quarterback because they're paying him like 30 million dollars whatever it was and then they have to bring in baker for nothing it was a disaster like they Although the Giants, the, the opposite fields, of the Giants, that they didn't pick up the fifth year and then they gave Daniel Jones the stupid deal, set well, a franchise. I would argue that the, I would argue that the second part of that was what was dumb. Like they should have just not they given just him the franchise tag him, yeah, or or just let him go to a different. Well, team. we can say that now, but that's not the the world. They came. I, I said that at the time, to be clear. <laughs> yeah, fair, but I, I just don't think they were they weren't like in a position reputationally or whatever sort of lead yeah, perception to do it. But they should just franchise tag him and sign Barkley if they were going to. What do you do? I mean, you can pick up the fifth if you wanted to. I I just think it's kind of unnecessary. I think, yeah, I think you're right. You don't pick up the fifth. You let him, you let it play out. He, I think he takes the job by the end of the year, and then you say to Justin Fields, "You know what the market is. We just did it. Sign a cheap two-year deal with us, and you can be a starting NFL quarterback." And I think he probably does that. So, but I do, from a best ball perspective, this is. I mean, Fields. Still, he hasn't had much value in a while, and he's got very, very little yeah. value now. Um, you know, I you could talk me into like in a 20th round draft, you're going like round 19, 20, and you just take both. Like, you know, that's like a put it together kind of quarterback. I don't think two. I want to take, I don't think I want to take Russ at all because I don't, I don't he's want gonna to start games at the end of the year, and even if he does, what's his upside? Yeah, it's pretty low. Because yeah, it, it's like this thing I keep offense. entertaining, but I have not actually done and probably won't do. They just don't take them. To me, investment. Russ is like to me, Russ is like kind of like Tannehill from last year, where it's like, mm-hmm. like we're 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 getting like a pretty low upside bet anyway, who's probably sub fifty percent to finish the season. That's a good comp. I mean, it's a really good comp. Yeah, but I think Fields for from a dynasty perspective is 
is not it's not it's not over. I think he's coming No, it's not over. He's coming back for another another round of starting in the league, I think. I think it's probably over if you're like, you know, there's there's the truthers out there that are like I'm, you know, H O D L all caps, like I'm never never selling. Like I think that's I'm I'm not I'm not there. But the nice thing is there are people like that in your league. So like I just think you you hold now and then you survey later. And at a certain point, like I think I have him ranked. I think he's like the first player ranked in my early second tier in in ranks. Like when I, I do them by like draft pick value, and like once you get to that tier, like to me, kind of everybody left is either speculative or they don't have that much upside. So once I'm into speculative or don't have that much upside, like what has more upside than twenty four year old elite Russian quarterback and super flex? Like not not much. Like even if you just get like he has tons of upside and trade value. If he just starts eight games and you get eight games of like a top eight quarterback, like that's a lot of value provided to your team, even if nothing else happens. Like, like I don't know. Like, if you if you paid an early second for Sam Howell last year and now he's worth nothing, like, are you even that upset? Like, you're you're probably you're probably like, all right, I took the shot. It didn't really work out. Depends how your team was. Yeah, and, yeah. If you're if you couldn't use those points, you're you're. I guess you probably well, shouldn't have been paying the early second. It, you put it this way, right? Like if someone traded an early second for Keenan Allen right now, like would you say they're insane? Uh I mean, I don't love that. I, I don't want to pay an early second. You don't Keenan. love that, but it's not like I don't I wouldn't say that's like catastrophic. No, I wouldn't say it's catastrophic. Where do I have Keenan? Uh no, I actually have I have Keenan right to where he would pay an early second for him. So Maybe right. I just need to so lower like, because that didn't feel and good. And I think I have him. I think I have him in my mid two ranks, but maybe, maybe someone will look at my ranks and clown me. Maybe I have him in the early second, but like, you know, no, what, you're what's you're slightly know? behind. I think you've got him early to mid second, probably. Right. So, and he's probably going to be like one year. Like you know, James Conner, Joe Mixon, all the all. There's all so many players yeah, that people that. are going to trade early or mid second round picks for that are going to basically give you one year of production and expire or have the potential to. Like Fields is that, but I don't like what would you say the odds are that he then starts for like two to three years after this? Like maybe 30%, 20%, not zero percent. I think so. The thing about if you want to paint the bull case for Fields, like a true bull case, it's that he's by all accounts like an awesome teammate, locker room guy. The re why do you take the six? The few the bears, the official explanation is we needed to do right by Justin. Bullshit. They traded him to a team that immediately declared he was the backup and it's a con and the pick has conditions based on playing time. So they're incentivized not to play him. Well, that's not I'll how you do right. By that. Justin. That's, that's how oh, you oh. get him off the team. So you don't have a quarterback controversy when Caleb comes in. Uh, I agree with all of that, except for the incentive. I think that that's maybe a little overblown because if he, if he, if he doesn't play, then he doesn't play. But if you play him, basically one of two things happen. Like either he's going to sign with a different team and you're going to get a comp pick that cancels out whatever you just upgraded. Like you're probably getting a fifth and then it's like a fifth and a sixth for a fourth, which is pretty much even, or you love what you see and you resign them and you can give less of a shift that you just lost a fourth round pick. Like, I I don't think that that condition is going to have much of an effect on Pittsburgh's decision-making. I think whether he yeah, plays maybe not. how Russ plays. That's, that's true. But like the idea that po like polls was somehow playing this to to make sure you know fields it worked out for fields and they did right by him like if you wanted to do right by justin fields you wait and see if there's an injury or you know you this was not about fields at all yeah. this was about getting him off the roster so they didn't have i mean you have this contingent of bears fans that was like not only thought he should be the starter but we're we're like going into you know like josh norris sharing youtube comments of like <laughs> you guys are crazy that that you think they're even drafting Caleb. Don't you see the big picture here? Yeah. You know, lunatics. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. you've got that to deal with if you're polls. I mean, imagine being polls in that situation. But then the other thing is Fields is is beloved by his teammates. That's going yeah. to help him in in uh any anywhere, but I think it especially is going to help him in Pittsburgh. Like I feel like if Mike Tomlin sees the way Justin Fields is kind of carrying himself compared to Russell Wilson. <laughs> Like that, right? Who's famously big, not beloved by his teammates? <laughs> it's about a big, as big a discrepancy as you can get between these two <laughs> quarterbacks. <laughs> and now I think you know you want to imagine 
Justin Fields comes in, plays pretty well in an Arthur Smith system that should utilize his mobility, not going to put too much on his shoulders, going to be about the run game. You know, he's going to be able to play action off of that. Can he be Ryan Tannehill in this system? I think he can. I think he can hit some big plays. I think he can run around, do boots, run off the boots, you know, put up some production. They're always a team that's like somehow, some way making the playoffs. If they sneak into yeah. the playoff list with Justin Fields, he signs a two year deal, and you've got basically the Ryan Tannehill, where he comes back to life after getting benched in Miami, goes to Arthur yeah. Smith, and it's going to feel year to year with Fields. But I think we, I think that path exists where you just free. get this like free, really underpriced, maybe not free, but really underpriced quarterback production that ends up lasting for, you know, beyond after this season, you get like two to three more years out of that, which is pretty huge. That's a pretty huge win if that were to materialize. I think that that's a great chance of materializing. Um, I mean, I think that they're going to, like, this is Arthur Smith's dream. He's going to be able to give 20 carries to Najee Harris, 15 carries to Jalen Warren, 10 carries to Justin Fields, and, you know, like maybe 15 pass attempts. He's He's pumped. He is he's so excited for, for what he's gonna be able to get to do. And the fun thing is is it's gonna be fine for fantasy men. Just as long as George Pickens a 50% target share, we don't care about anybody else. So That's it right. could just be eight Pickens targets and then 45 rush attempts, and we're we're good on that. And I think that it's kind of what they have to do, right? Like Steelers seem resigned to this, like we'll never actually be bad thing. So if you're gonna be a team that is sort of without the ability to get a real quarterback, like a real elite quarterback, probably the next best thing to do if you're going to try and pull off upsets against teams that are better is like play this kind of unique high variance style where you slow the game down and you kind of do it like a more of like a trick them, dick them kind of offense. And they're going to do like weird option stuff. And it's going to be, they're going to kind of make it work the best they can, I think. And, and kind of, on a little bit of smoke and mirrors. And if that's what you want to do, like I think Fields is just better at that than Russ, right? Like the Russ is such a bad fit with Arthur Smith. Like I think it was totally worth them signing him for $1.2 million because it's it costs you nothing if it goes bad. But Arthur Smith is like everything kind of has to be on time and it's very preordained. Right. And like there's kind of one place where the ball's supposed to go. And that's not really Russ. And it's not really Fields either, but that what he can do in the run game, I think fits really nicely. And Russ just isn't really that guy anymore. Yeah, it's not really fields, but I think from like a drop back from a pure drop back passing game, it's definitely not fields. But I think he can no. like with Ryan Tannehill. I mean, Ben Gretsch would always talk about this where like, you know, Tannehill's rolling out and AJ Brown's on the other side of the field. And it's like, that's it. You're not AJ Brown's not seeing that target. You know, like he's he is literally being asked to read half the field like Smith yeah. does simplify. I hate that I'm defending Arthur Smith right now, but he does simplify things for the quarterback. You know, too much probably, but yeah. But I, th I think Fields would be pretty fun if he can take the starting job. And I mean, Russ turns thirty six in November, like, and he has right. looked pretty washed the last couple of years. Like, yeah. I, I think the most likely I don't scenario know, I'm sure about here, his touchdown to interception ratio. <laughs> yeah, I said about there's, dude. When a new coach comes in and, and makes it his mission to get you off the team, <laughs> that's generally a red flag. Uh, I think most likely scenario is we see Justin Fields starts this year, and I think it'll be pretty good in that system. So anyway, yeah. I had now have a heart out as well. So we we got to wrap right. it up there. But me, I'm glad we got to talk about Fields. People deserve a Fields talk. It would be weird yeah. if we did a podcast today for two hours and they got no mention of Justin I know. Fields. I know. Uh, anything you want to mention before we sign off? Uh, yeah, I have a couple pieces on free agency. I'll have, I think, at least one more up on thinking about thinking, and then it'll basically just be rookie content um, all the way through to the draft. Um, I have my ranks updated, as you can tell since we did this. I did this last night, but I haven't actually sent the alert out. So um, you'll have my copy my ranks up on thinking about thinking, and then uh, we just talked through all the consensus stuff today. I'm going to – I've updated some of these ranks tweaks because I got a, a big update out on these ranks last Friday – or this, you know, this, this past Friday – uh, was tweaking during the pod, so I'll get that updated uh, on the site. And then uh, Stephanie Miller's helped me out with Dynasty stuff, so we're going to have a weekly rolling update of the ranks every Monday nice. going forward. And, uh, yeah, check out her article on Rasheed Rice. I've got my first article on the rookies coming out Wednesday, 
um, Wednesday morning. I'll, I'll throw that out, uh, starting with the quarterbacks. Big fan of Drake May. Uh, excited to excited to share some, some thoughts on that. Um, but, yeah, look for that. We'll uh, hopefully do this again soon. See you then.